Brad Peel on BeatStopBeat.com and today I want to talk to you about how to figure out what your metabolic rate is. You see, in order to eat less, in order to lose weight, we have to know how many calories we're burning in a day. In order to eat less than that, and our body compensates by hopefully making us lose most of our body fat. The problem is it's very difficult to know what your metabolic rate is. I mean, there's lots of calculators online you can check, but really, a lot of them have some pretty fatal flaws. Uh, for instance, most of them give you some sort of activity factor. So you take what they've decided is your basal metabolic rate based on your height and your weight and your age and your sex, and then they tell you to multiply it by a number to make up for the amount of exercise or movement you do in a day. Which is great, except what about the days when you don't exercise? You know, you multiply your 1,700 calories you need as sort of your, your basal level. You time that one by 1.5, the amount of calories you probably burn when you're exercising. And then you eat at that level, or slightly less than that level, every single day. But what about, you know, you don't work out on Tuesdays, or Sundays. Wednesdays is a shorter workout. You know, Mondays you really kill it, you might even be over that. You see, the variability of your daily life is what makes most of these calculators not that useful. And this is interesting because this is where the whole idea of eating 500 calories less and then 500 calories less from that and then less than that. That's where that idea comes from. It's just eventually you're going to find your sweet spot. Now, realistically, put an application properly as long as you're not eating 5,000 calories. But let's say that your daily expenditure is somewhere around that magic 2,000 number and you've been eating at around 3,000. Well, you already know because you're not losing weight, you have to lower it a bit. So you take it down to a safe estimate of 2,500. Well, now is when you implement that 500s rule, right? It's like, okay, I'm not really losing here, I'll drop it by 500. I'm not really losing by here, I'll drop it by 500. As soon as you start losing, you've got slowly but surely, you'll start to figure out the amount of food, the volume of the foods you like, you need to eat to lose weight. You'll never know unless you're at a university and able to get constant you know, sort of test done on you to find out your metabolic rate is. You're never going to be able to say to someone, my metabolic rate is 2,136. It's just not going to happen. The other thing you have to be aware of is that even once you get down below what you need so that you start losing weight, you may have to go down again. And this isn't because your metabolic rate all of a sudden just dropped on you. It's actually quite the opposite. You've learned to slowly creep up your calories. You know, whether it's finding that sugar-free gum that's only a couple calories and you have two packs of it that adds 70 calories a day. Or you find that one, you know, high-protein, low-carb bar you really like, but still 300 calories. Whatever it is, we tend to find a way to sneak up. So every now and again, it's time to sort of take an inventory, and audit of what you're eating, and bring it back down. You don't need to be down here. That's just ridiculous. Just to get around here. So you start wherever you are, maybe a drop or two to get down to a point where you're actually losing weight. Then you don't have to keep going down, let's admit. You just have to completely audit yourself every once in a while to make sure you're still, in fact, down. So that's why people are telling you it's very difficult to measure metabolic rate. It's probably the best spot where guessing is your best bet. And this is where the idea of dropping your calories by 500 calories every so often comes from. It's just find that sweet spot and then making sure you stay in it.